riding down the Harland Highway. You're on the Harland Highway. Harland Williams. You're on the Harland Highway. Hi, everybody. It's me, Harland Williams, and you're riding down the Harland Highway. There it is, the Harland Highway. And there's somebody here. Somebody's sitting here. Look who it is. Comedian, actor, model, maybe, <laughs> Orny Adams. How are you, guy? I'm great. Great. I, no, I mean, I, I'm actually uh, thrilled that you're doing this. Congratulations. Thank we, you. We've been talking about this for a while <laughs> on our hikes, and yeah, and you've been a, a big supporter of my podcast. Oh you've been yeah, on it twice, and uh, I'm just fascinated by the, the technical aspect. Yeah, Orny's Orny's a tech head, and just so you know, right out of the gate, forget about the Harlan Highway. Orny has a podcast called "What's Wrong with Orny Adams?" Because a lot of guys wait to the end to plug your stuff. Yeah, and if anybody tunes out, I got you. I'm yeah. not letting you. Uh, you've been hooked in. Orny Adams podcast. What's wrong with Orny Adams? You got to check it out. Go to his Instagram. Go to. Are you on Twitter? Oh yeah. Twitter. I mean, d- d- you go to his house. No, go don't to go my to my house. No, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. Um, but it's good to have you here, buddy. And yeah, I'm excited to be doing the podcast. And uh, you know, it's just great to have you here. And uh, how how's about- the feedback on episode one? Episode one, the feedback was really good. I expected to have like uh, you know maybe uh, <laughs> twenty listeners or whatever, or twenty views. And uh, we're up at like 900 just about That's after amazing. two days. It's amazing. So I'm excited. And people have been subscribing. Thank you. Is it subscribing or subscribing? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. How do you put that subscribe button on YouTube? That's, a, that's really nifty. What that's do you mean? Cool. Like in the corner of your video, the whole time it says subscribe. Oh, it's, it's just an image. You can't hit it. I actually did. <laughs> I think it does. I think it works. That's. I, I think it actually works. Oh, if you go on YouTube, there's yes. there is a subscribe button yeah, there. Yeah, that's really and, cool. And that's part of your YouTube channel. When you go in there, it asks you if you want the subscribe button. So, yeah. and just minutes ago, I said Orny was a tech head, and now I'm I'm really recanting that because I have my YouTube game is like I I have the least the least interaction with the least people. Uh, Going there to see my content is YouTube. I mean, it's like really even TikTok. I've been there for like two months, and I'm blowing away my YouTube numbers and all that. And Orny, no. After you do the Harland Highway, this <laughs> this is going to change. Okay. What is the speed limit? Because the, you know I like to go fast. That's the thing. There's no speed limit really? on the highway, dude. You can, that's that's what you you can fly over speed bumps. Have you ever sped over a speed bump by accident? It's horrible. What happened? Well, you hear like what sounds like your car being dismantled from un- underneath. You just hear, <laughs> and you go, oh, you go, oh, that's God. not, much like whatever I just yeah, did there. You wow. just go, something's going to start leaking. It's, this isn't good, you know. <laughs> so you like, you stripped out the bottom of your car, the undercarriage? Well, the thing is, and this is what's interesting to me, they, they're called speed bumps, but here in LA, they're called humps. You ever just see like it says humps? Yeah. And then in Canada, they, they call it roadkill? What do they call it? <laughs> I think they call it drive-by or yeah. something, yeah. Wait, they call it humps here? Yeah, have you ever seen like humps ahead? God. Or, yeah. Sounds like what little boys do when they're going through Uh-oh, puberty. Here we go. <laughs> Canceled episode two. Am I, I'm the first guest on the, what, yeah. what, this is the relaunch? What is this? this? This is the relaunch. So I did the Harland Highway audio podcast for almost 11 years and I got kind of burnt out on it. And then the whole YouTube kind of thing started to come back during COVID and, and people suddenly wanted to see people doing podcasts. And I thought, you know, that sounds fresh. That sounds fun. Yeah. And I didn't do a lot of guests on my audio podcast, but with, with the video one, I thought now, now I'm, I'm going to have guests and buddies and comedians and stuff. So here we go, man. It is strange when you do a podcast on your own, which is what I... Sorry, go You've ahead. Over this, you, you know that's no, how I drink. No, you're being dramatic. You know that's how I drink pop. You, you wouldn't do that if we were on a broadcast TV show. I you, sure would. Are you kidding? No, if you, if you, I was on Conan or something, hell yeah. If Conan was on Conan, that show's over. Is it gone? It's gone. Which oh is no, too bad because I liked Conan. But uh, oh, Kimmel, man. would you do that on Kimmel? Yeah. Really? Oh yeah, man. I did a movie called Robots years ago. 
and I was it was an animated feature where I did the voice of one of the robots and um Kimmel had me on to promote it and I was sitting there and he goes so hard and I, I anticipated he would ask this he goes mm-hmm. so Harlan what's it feel like to be a robot and I had brought like three or four giant nuts from a from a screw you know the nut you yeah, put yeah, on yeah. a screw oh no and just I, spit them out no, he oh. goes, what's it like to be a robot? And I go, not bad. You want to see my nuts? And I threw a handful of nuts on the on the table, and it was great. So, yeah, to do this. Huh? Now, we went over this on my on, on my your, podcast because yeah. so it was watch shocking it. the yeah. first time I, mm-hmm. I heard you do that, and you yeah. claim that's to get the, the fizz effect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It makes the pop, the pop fizz up in your mouth. It makes It's going to make the viewers question everything about you. Yeah, but that's what I want them to do. That's what keeps them engaged. That's what keeps them here. Yeah. But this isn't about questioning me. This is about questioning you. And boy, do I have some questions for you today, guy. And I love go. your shirt. You're now, I know you painted that. That's is No, that I didn't it? paint this, but I did make it. I love fishing. So this is, a, this is a photograph of a fishing lure. Oh, I thought that was a hair dryer. A hair dryer with fish hooks in it. What am I? What am I uh, on in Beverly Hills trolling for uh, the the hairstylist? The mic um, plug is covering the actual hook, so for oh, me, it looks a hair dryer. Looks like a hair dryer with an eye. Wow, this could be a new uh, cartoon <laughs> hair dryer eye guy. I don't know. It sounds good to me. Um. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you because it's still sort of fresh. But it's getting tired. But I think we're still in the window. Oh, boy. The Will Smith thing. I just want to ask you. Uh, people have talked it to death. But yeah. you, you've you been a comedian for 25 years now. I just want to know. Because I've never asked you this. Has anyone ever walked up on stage during one of your shows? Have you ever had someone walk on stage and confront you? I don't think. You know what? Maybe I have. A, a woman. It feels like that happened. Okay. Uh, but I don't think a like anybody's been aggressive, maybe verbally. Okay. But, you know, the other thing that I do, when somebody starts coming forward, I, I move up stage. I, oh, really? I, yeah, I cut, I cut the gap. I let them know, right. you know, you got the mic stand. You're just, but for the most part, you know, my comedy isn't really attacking. Right. It's, if that happened, it was like a misunderstanding or something like that. Right, but okay. You've had, I mean, we've had, we, I've had weird things happen. You know, in the early days, I used to have security walk me to my car and stuff like that. What, what, what was that all about? I don't know. You just, you're playing these honky tonks. Wait, wait so I want one story of why security walked you to your car. Because maybe I spoke to the audience more back then. Or, you know, if you're being interrupted and you're telling someone to shut up over and over again or something like that. Or if a guy's trying to impress his girlfriend, let's say, and I shut him down. Well, then, you know. It just becomes one of those situations. And, you know, we're not talking about comedy clubs. When you, when you start out, now, like, you and I last night were bouncing around the clubs here in Hollywood. Yeah. And we play fantastic rooms all over the country. But comedy 25, 30 years ago didn't look like it does today. There weren't these franchise clubs like the Improv, which were run by, like, sort of management teams that run restaurants. Like, they're, it's a really well-run Yeah, yeah, machine. organization, yeah. yeah. lighting's right. You know, Boston Comedy Club in New York City, they used to have these lights that, it was the same lights I had in my dorm room in college. Like, you know, we like have the little thing you go like, that's how they lit the stage. You can say it, Ikea. Yeah. We're Ikea friends. I don't think Ikea was even around back then. Well, um, seems it like was maybe it was. Kmart, it was. Kmart, uh, okay, that has a K in it. I Kmart. Robark. It sees was Robark, another K. Caldors. It Cald, was, everything's got a K. Yeah, it begins with a C. Let's just say you Ikea. Know, and then I don't you know why we're playing, arguing you about start it. Out, like you just Ikea. basically play like any place you can get paid. And that, this is bars. And I remember like one time during the final four, which we just had, which is basketball. Right. And UMass was in the final four, so you can look at whenever that was happening. And they had the, the game on behind me. Nobody wants to see the comedian. They just want to see the game. We're in Massachusetts. And so, you know, you're playing places like that, and people are there f- for the game, and the comedian is interrupting that. And so yeah. that's when shit happens. Yeah, people don't want that the game turned off. Now... What I think you really mean to ask me is, 
Have I ever been slapped by a man in a tuxedo? Is that what you're asking me? I've, have yeah, I ever been on not? an award show and been slapped? You know, yeah. that uh, that's a whole nother level. And I find as time, I was very guarded. I, I did an interview for Forbes magazine the day after. Yeah. And they asked my opinions. And I was sort of guarded. I find myself less and less guarded and more opinionated about what's gone on and I, I sent you a clip the other day of Bill Maher yeah. and I thought he was he was fantastic and today I actually watched a clip from SNL and I thought that was really well written Whoa. too Whoa, so Whoa, these Whoa. guys are nailing it yeah no it's but you've never had it that's what I want and, and by the way the final four that, that that term's not leaving my head it feels like I know it's a sports term but I feel like it should be applicable after like the mushroom clouds go off and there's like four humans left. Yeah, on roaming the planet. That that feels like it should be the final four. Yeah, I won't be one of them. I'll be out. I you will. Oh, uh, listen. I run towards the bomb. Why? Oh, you like yeah. you love mushrooms, huh? I am not sticking around when I have to fight for food and camp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. What do you mean camp? Every... I got a prep kit. It's got a cyanide pill and a little cup to take it with my urine, and I'm out. Dude, Had a good run. Every house will be empty. You don't have to camp. You I could don't... go stay in a different mansion in Beverly Hills every I, night. I don't need to be here. I don't need the survivor's guilt. I'm gone. What if I want you here I'm as a out. buddy? I'm out. But I want you here as a buddy. Play cards, tell ghost stories. We could light a campfire in a Beverly Hills living room and tell ghost stories. I wonder if there's four people left. The final four. And I'm one I of them. I said it. If you're one of them. Does my podcast at that point get any traction? Well, if you could get just three people to listen <laughs> to it, would be a lot. it That's would be a hit. That would be 100%. That would be 100. Yeah. Because there's only four. That's like friends finale numbers. Dude, that's those are huge numbers. Yeah. If you could just get three people to watch your podcast out of the final four. What if I was the official voice of the final four? Oh, I think you are. You sound like what it to me. there were four of us and the three others were higher up in the podcasting world, which is oh, God. almost everybody. Yeah. yeah. And now wow. I'm that's still not bummer. being listened to. There's four people left, and I'm still... But here's the good news. If all three of the other ones are podcasters, that means all three of the other ones are not police officers or affiliates of the law. Mm -hmm. So you can knock them all off, never get caught, no repercussions, and you're the last one standing. You're the final one, and that means you're the top podcast on the planet. But in this fantasy world, is this the entire world, this four? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The final four. There's no final. How many continents do you think there are? I know for a fact, because I'm a Google Earth nut, I, some people, uh, you know, peruse the internet for things, but I just, uh, I'm a continent guy, and there's, uh, there's 16, 16 continents. Oh, you're right. I didn't think you were going to get it mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Do you know peruse? I don't peruse. Is on my list. I have a list I've, of, of words dumb people use to sound smarter. I meant Peru's I, is one of them. I meant Peru. I've been to Peru. Peru is one of the continents. Peru is one of the, that's what yeah. I was referring to. Yeah. Did you think I meant Peru's as in like looking through no, no, something? No, I knew you you were incapable of using that word. Yeah. So that's name right. the 16 continents. Okay. Africa, mm -hmm. Australia, yeah. uh, North America, mm -hmm. uh, South America, Bermuda. Mm-hmm. Dominican Repub Republic, Club Med in Haiti, and Bakersfield. That's nine. And the rest, I have to go pl get my risk board and double check, but Greenland? Greenland and is actually, Australia's one. I said that Did was my Australia? second one, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody's not listening. <laughs> glad, glad I'm not one of the final four with Victoria, the guy who doesn't listen. Victoria. Victoria? Yeah, isn't that up in Canada? That's, That's a that city. Island. Uh, what's that island? Vancouver Island. No, it's not Vancouver Island. Victoria's it's... on Vancouver okay, Island. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that uh, place. Hello, Google Earth on line <laughs> four. Um, that camera's not even straight. Like, it's 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 the shitty of all the... Are you saying I have a gay camera? <laughs> well, no. I heard someone say my camera isn't straight. And if my camera's gay, that's okay with me. I'm okay with you, friend. If you like other cameras, I'm okay with that. If he's going to be... 
feel like other cameras. Like well, all the all the other cameras are the same sex. I mean, well, like, yeah. I mean, that's clearly female. Why is that? I don't know what, why. First of all, cameras are fluid. But that tripod, the one on you. I mean, what is it? That's a monofuku. That's like the best. That's of the a tripod. beauty, yeah. And then that one, what is it? That one came that with came the camera. With the lighting yeah. I'm still setting up a little. So yeah. if Orny's like off a little, uh, you know, what would you expect from someone who's in the final four? The world's off its axis, so nothing's normal during the final four, Orny Adams. The other thing that Hello. I love is that you've got like some of the same extension go. cords that my parents have. Like those... I don't think those are like even UF whatever rated. These are your parents' extension cords. <laughs> I went to their I'm house. I'm buying you all new plugs. I'm going to really? get Yes, tripod. I would have brought it. I, you know, I was going to pick up. Uh, Wait a minute. Hang yes. on. Let me give a plug to that. Uh, to the plugs? To the plugs. Orny Adams is going to buy me some new plugs, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it right here on the Harland Highway. This is an official plug plug. And now back to our regular programming. So I want to talk to you. There's something that people don't know about you that I'm going to, I hope you don't get mad at me. I doubt I will. I, I, it's coming. I'm, no one has ever talked to you about this, but I, we're good friends. And so <laughs> I know this. And you might, you might want to back up. Orny Adams in his life has never, ever used an emoji. Not once have you done a damn emoji. What is your hang up with emojis, Adams? I hate I hate. What the hell? It's the same reason I'm not doing Wordle. Wordle? Same, What's that? When anytime I see Sounds like everybody doing something, I run the other way. This is why what? I've had trouble with my career and everything because I just don't jump on the bandwagon. I, emoji, we, we, it's like going back to uh, the, the cave sketchings. Right, writing on the cave wall. You love emojis. You love the thumbs up. You love the... Well, it's easier than writing, hey, this was a great conversation. I can just do this. It's faster. Or it's a, it's a little extra. I know. They're annoying, too. I hate them, too. But the I don't even know is, why I use them. You, But you're not even using the right emojis. You're using, like, old person emojis. <laughs> like, you'll give me a thumbs up, and it's, like, the size of the actual thumbs up. It's I like, know. It's this big. It takes up my whole screen. It's like, I know. It's I'll, crazy. I'll tell someone, I, it was great going to the movie with you, and then I'll send them an emoji of a T-bone steak. Or something. I just, you, but here's another one. I've never put LOL. Me neither. I hate that. I will do ha 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 or yeah. just kidding. Like, like, like someone will comment under like one of my videos or something, and then I'll write something like sort of snarky back, yeah. just kidding, just so they know because everything's misinterpreted. That's the thing. Like when I was talking to Forbes magazine about the slap. Which is, There's a drop in the Forbes magazine yeah. thing again. Okay. Well, when they I was, wanted no jokes. They wanted, and they, it was, because the first thing I said, I go, this is Forbes. I said, shouldn't we be talking about how the stock market has rallied two days since the slap? This is like the slap rally, and they're like, maybe we shouldn't joke about it. Yeah. It, you know, it's. Um, or the Forbes 500. You've heard that yeah, term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The final 500. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is. Now, you're not getting away from the emoji thing, bro. We're friends. I want to know why you've never sent me a damn emoji. I never will. As a, as I just, a friend, I deserve one. In fact, I when, want an emoji from Orny Zachary Adams. I always, when I'm, like, if, to me, it feels like a real screw you, like, the end of the conversation. Like, when I, when I start, like, cute. dating somebody, I always think, how soon until she sends a stupid emoji? Oh, the first text, they'll probably send one. No, okay. If it's words emoji... Like it punctuates. For I, my eyes aren't even good enough to even see. What is that? Cherries? Is oh, you it, just think there's crap on your phone screen. You're like rubbing it and you're like, These cherries. emojis. See, see, I don't think you even know this. Uh -oh. They actually, those emojis. Oh, you're talking to a guy, by the way, who knows all 16 continents, but carry on. They, each one of those little pictures means something. Like they can tell a story with emojis. I, I don't know what they mean. And I do. They're annoying. Figure it out. I'm not going to try and figure it out. Now, a standalone emoji yeah. is so, it makes me want to take a nap. So it's an emoji of someone sleeping because that one exists. No, it's, I'm sure there's an emoji for every, there's an emoji for, I don't want to use an emoji. 
Really? But yeah, I, I think that the problem is we need to go back to communicating with words, not abbreviations, like full sentences, proper grammar, and we're going to bring this world back to a place where there's peace. Emojis over-communicate. Have you ever had some... inflation. Why are we yelling? Emojis <laughs> bring out the anger. But have you ever got... A, I think we overuse them. Have you ever got an emoji from someone and they go, hey... I'm about to take off for Cleveland, picture of an airplane. Right. And it's like, hey, I didn't think you were floating on your magic carpet to Cleveland there, Aladdin. Can you pull me out of this frozen face? This is comedy timing and I need your help. I didn't That's want to a great point, Harlan. Yeah. I, that I, you I, brought I, that up because, yeah, when you say taking off, <laughs> it's inclusive of you're on an airplane. You know what I mean? Yeah. What I don't like is if it's the airplane and it's not true to the actual, if they're taking like a 777, yeah. like a jumbo jet, oh. and they send me like, you know, a wow. World War II plane <laughs> no, picture, yeah. screw yeah. you, get your, get your facts right. Oh, oh you mean the... the you're uh, going in the Snoopy plane? Yeah, the, the, the Snoopy Delta Airlines airline Zop with Camel? Yeah. How about this emoji? Orny Adams, now, a is, piece of poo with eyes on it. Now, I see, I would have thought that what was actually the? my image as as raspberry frozen yogurt. I sent this to a fat girl and she said, yeah, let's go for frozen yogurt. Dude, if you take a dump and your poo is looking back at you, you better get to a tapeworm doctor, bro. Yeah, I mean, hi, I I'm stinky. What is this? A new Disney character? Yeah, Can you I imagine don't... taking a loaf in the woods. You're already afraid of bears and bobcats, and you, you go to find a leaf to wipe your crack. And hey, don't leave me back here. What? I'm scared of grizzly bears. Are there other bodily function emojis? Is there the earwax emoji? Does it matter after you've seen a steaming loaf of poo it's with not, eyes? First of all, we, you and I. We never talk bodily. This is an I know, but are. emojis are forcing us. Look, we're getting angry. No, 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 we're yelling at each other. Factual. Emojis are rip, ripping us apart. No, no, no. First of all, it's not steaming. There's nothing steaming about that. Well, hold on there, Orny Adams, Mr. Literate. Here mm -hmm. we go. Is this uh, fucking steaming for you now, guy? A steaming loaf of emoji poo with eyes. Hey, Orny Adams. Don't leave me here. I want to sleep in the tent tonight with you. Don't leave me out in the woods, Orny Adams. What really, to me, and again, I don't discuss bodily fluid. But well, we me, are. We're doing a pretty good job right now, friend. We're going to leave the subject after I say this, because this is the, uh, okay. you know, this is the... the we all do it, guy, but uh, maybe you don't. Okay. It wasn't until the, what you're calling the 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 ding, the dong, the... the, uh, the uh, Feces. I said poo. Feces Harlan. is so clinical. Okay. I'm, I'm very clinical. Are you I'm, asking I'm, me to I'm hand you the steaming poo? No. What I want to just say is... You, you put can, your you hand out. Hold it up. You were reached. You, reach, you want me to hold up the steaming feces now. The fact that the steaming feces <laughs> yeah. is happier than me. Yeah. Wow. Like, I just never... <laughs> That's brutal. I wouldn't have flushed so many... Oh, oh boy. See, that's a first. He's never talked about it. I got him to do it. That means something else is going to break. You're going to send me an emoji soon. No. You said you never would. No. Oh, he just, oh, whoa. He watch crumpled up. Watch David Letterman. Whoa, dude. You watch when you cut that, it's going to look like it went right into the line. If that camera was a fan, the shit would have hit the fan. <laughs> See, now, at first emojis made us angry. We got in a really heated con And then at the end, they made us laugh. Well, I, I still hate them. I just think that there's a... But uh, at the end, yeah, I, you're a hard guy to make laugh. And with the shit hitting the fan, you laugh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it back and do it in slow motion. We're going to see this mofo laugh. And I rarely call him a mofo, but right now I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love laughing. I, I wish I laughed more. Well, I see, what made you laugh just now? The thing you hate the most, emoji. 
But I, uh, they, they, I, oh, I'm I on got a you giggling, Orny Adams. You were going to leave me in the woods with the grizzly bears. But I got you giggling finally, Orny Adams. And guess what I am? I'm not just a steaming pile of poo. I'm an emoji, you motherfucker. You could not leave me hanging in the comedy pause. Screwing up my timing. If you could, Orny. Bro. It's too long, bro. Say something. Okay, I'm going to go back into character there. Dude, what's that face you're doing? Were you seducing the camera? See That's a gay camera. It's the orny emoji. <laughs> it's the orny emoji. See? Dude, you're getting into it. I'm sensing it. Whoa, I've never seen you so seductive. What the hell, Tom Cruise Jr.? Whoa. Ooh, now you're growl. You're Whoa! <laughs> have you seen my acting? Because I can... I, mean, I have seen yeah, your acting. Yeah, and by the way, Orny's a really great actor. I hadn't oh, yes, seen... No. You are. No. I even told you that once because <laughs> I didn't know about Orny's acting. And Orny plays the coach on the fabulous MTV series Teen Wolf. Am I allowed to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Orny just finished shooting a new Teen Wolf movie about a week ago. He's still in the middle of production. He's got a whole bunch more to do. And Orny, years ago, I went, I was just motoring around on on YouTube and I found a compilation of Orny Adams doing your coach roles. And I don't know if you remember this. I text you. I said, dude, you're a really good actor. I I really thought your timing's good. You're. Your your intensity's good. Your commit like I I texted you and said, dude, you're out of the blue. I didn't need to, but I was super well, impressed. I appreciate it. But I mean, really, it's just an extension of who I am. So I'm just yeah, being but, myself. It's yeah, not- but people, not a lot of people can do that when the cameras go on and there's thirty people in a crew. Like people That's what, lock up, but yeah. you, you are very natural and great. I think the hardest part of acting for me is that you have to be ready to go when they say go. And sometimes you're sitting around for six, you're on a set for six hours. Sometimes I'm on a field, I'm in a tent, sitting there. They set up the cameras, they don't like it. They have to do a reset. It starts to rain, the lighting's wrong, oh, something yeah. blows. And then you're sitting there. It, it always happens like this you, you start the day, you know your lines pretty well. Yeah. Then you do, a, you do a rehearsal, right? And then you start to, you hear it with the other actor for the first time, and you really get to know it. Then you go back to your trailer while they start to set up and Ugh. get your makeup. And then you really, you commit and you know the lines. Then by the time you start shooting, you're there, you got it. And by the time you finish, because they do so many different angles, you have no idea what the lines are. You've yeah. completely forgot them. And they you drain you. They it's drain called, you. The, the, the famous saying in acting is hurry up and wait. Yeah. The worst I ever had to do, I was doing a movie called Rocket Man, and one day we got there at like six in the morning, the whole crew, the lighting guy took eight hours, eight hours to light a room. And I was like, exactly everything you said, by the time we got to sit, I was was like, wait, what? What are we doing? Yeah. Uh, Suddenly I was filming Half-Baked, what hadn't even been written yet. I was like, wait, what's going on, man? I don't even really learn the lines until I get there. Like, I I read them, and I, and I... I, I know what the intention is, yeah. but memorizing like every, because what a lot of people don't know is that there's a script and you sort of have to stick to the script. Yeah, You can't, you, you want to be fluid, you want to improv, but they do so many different angles that it just won't match. Like yeah. If you do like an aside comment or stuff like that, and that's that's frustrating. And if you have a, there's a script supervisor that's on the set, so if it says if it's like we're going out later, and you say we are going out later, they're like you know they come over and they go. Well, you know, God, I didn't I, God, you didn't say. Yeah. And now they have iPads. This is the newest, and the iPad has highlighted everything you got wrong. Yeah. And mine looks <laughs> like the entire page is highlighted. It's like Good. I'm Good. not even close sometimes. Uh, you know what? You, some, as an actor, you got to take liberties too. I, this is my philosophy. You, you give them what they want off the page, and then I improv my ass off. And in all my movie roles, I'd I'd say ten to fifty percent of of my dialogue is improvised. And wasn't my... and that this is the case for me? What isn't one of your biggest lines in improvisation or something that wasn't on the script? Oh, a lot of them are. Yeah, like every movie I did it, and I didn't know whether the directors and the producers would leave the stuff in. Yeah. But they did, and some of them became sort of iconic. And then 
And then I got to a place where directors were kind of urging me to improv because they knew that, you know, hopefully I could I could drop some nuggets of gold for them, you know? Yeah. And so I, I just love it. Um, before we go any further, though, let me grab my peepers here because I have to ask you a question. Um, before we go any further, later in the show... And I mean, how much bigger could the font be? You still need readers? I can read it from here. These, okay, you know what? I, in my mind, I'm sending you an emoji of a middle finger, <laughs> and it's not mine. It's Paul Bunyan's. So yeah. it's a big effing middle finger there, uh, emoji hater. But uh, to go deeper than mm -hmm. just what we're talking about here, I want to know later if, if, if you'll be open for a psychic reading by uh, a medium we have come in, Clark Saliva. He's, uh, he's a, a medium, and he, he kind of can channel people. What is a medium? Uh, it, it's, it, it, because it, I, I know small, I know large, I know right. extra large, but a medium. Well, this guy, uh, he comes from a, a really, um, really small group of uh, experts that do this. So he's actually a medium what is rare. A medium? He's I a don't medium know what, rare. Oh, he's a rare medium. Yeah, yeah medium yeah. rare. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyways... Yeah. Uh, but I don't know what a medium. Explain to me what a medium. A medium. A medium. Ch so they channel the medium where where the the people are, the people that have transitioned into another plane or another afterlife oh, or so whatever. Talk so to the, the dead. Talk talk to the dead or or, oh. or, or, or yeah. To, basically, they can talk to the dead and channel spirits and. Do and you believe in this? I. I sort of do after watching uh, Clark Saliva do it. I mean, he does it with all our guests. Every guest gets a reading, and uh, who knows? Do you mind if I read it's, it's, uh, his Yelp reviews before? Uh, he doesn't have one. He doesn't He doesn't participate. He's a very kind of uh, innocuous guy, and he, he, he kind of keeps uh, clean and to himself, doesn't mm. do a lot of interviews because he's, he d says he doesn't want all the noise. Who does he want? Who do we? Who are we trying to contact? What are we well, doing? he's just gonna he's just gonna sit down and and talk to you and and he'll read you and then mm. maybe there's someone in your past or in your life or something going on inside of you or in your life that the saliva he'll, would know. He saliva. That's what he does with all our guests. Yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing. All your guests. He has a little sketch pad and he scribbles and he he feels energy and he, it's pretty. You'll see. All just, your guests. Yeah, all our guests do it. Yeah. So 100% of the guests have agreed to this. Yeah, all, all the guests. The, all the guests all, from episode from zero, negative one, negative just roll negative right two, past this three. part, it was kind of complicating, but... If it means something to you, I'll, I'll well, talk to... Well, I think maybe Clark Saliva. Clark Survive. S saliva. 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 Like he's, the stuff. Yeah, like yeah. the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But he's. And I'm uh, sure that's going to come into some sort of. No, that's just his name. This is, is this he's is a serious, But this is a serious medium. This isn't like a bit. This no, is, this, like this is not. You know, no. it's not going to be you dressed up pretending to be. No, no, no! Sub Come on, guy! Survivor. No, this this guy's legit. You'll yeah. be he's pretty pretty intense. Okay. I've seen him do it. Um, okay, but you know, I'm a uh, what we call a skeptic. Yeah, I don't believe in mediums or well, maybe, or be a, as long as you're open to it. We'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe nothing comes out of it, and maybe, uh, you know, something does. Do Let's... we have to take a commercial break or anything? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, right now, we're going to go uh, take a word from our sponsors, and uh, we'll be right back with the fabulous mm -hmm. emoji-hating Orny Adams right after this message from our sponsors. <laughs> Hi, Ernie Childs here with the amazing new Cheese Face. It's an incredible device that grates cheese in just seconds flat. The secret is the stainless steel blades look out that never need sharpening. Just grab your favorite cheese, place it on Cheese Face's incredible grating blades, and nothing could be easier. Shredded cheese in just seconds. Oh boy, makes coleslaw for any occasion. Order now and we'll throw in this cheese face carrot peeler for free. Here we go, that's a $17 value. Cheese face, look out, easy to clean. And stores in any kitchen cabinet or drawer. Look out, make your next party easier. Here we go and order the amazing new cheese face today. The amazing new cheese face. Look out. Okay, we're back. Here we are with the 
Fabule, and that's a little bit of French, Orny Adams. Fa- do you like that? Fabule? Do you like when I throw that onto your name? Is that French Canadian mm-hmm. or French, fr- fr- French, French? French Canadian, French. Yeah. French. I love the French Canadian. But you didn't answer. Do you like when I, I say the Fabule? Yeah, 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 Orny yeah. I, do. I, I feel like, okay. like if I ever uh, go Siegfried and Roar, like ever take this to Vegas and I do sequins, I would be Fabule. You know what, because I've always pictured you as maybe being a backup dancer in Barry Manilow's Vegas show. You know, I saw Barry Manilow live two years ago before COVID. My parents wanted to see him at the, uh, at the uh, what's that place where I live, the uh, Hollywood Bowl. And huh? the, the guy you puts saw on Barry a, Manilow? The guy puts on a show. Do you know, do you know how many I songs he's I think it's written? not only the camera that's a little bit gay in this you, room. I write the words. I write, I write the songs, songs that make the whole world sing. At the Copa, Copa Cabana. That's the closure. We should have got Well, I'm doing like a, a you know, the melody, not the But do melody. you know he wrote all the jingles for all the You ads. deserve a break, break today. today. So get up and get away to good McDonald's. Good to the last drop. Good to the last, last drop. drop. Folgers is good yeah. to the last drop. Good to the last drop. You don't drink coffee, do California you? California knows how to party. Yeah. California that. Wrote that. knows how to party. That's lot, Manilow. A, it's man, a lot of people don't know a lot of the Manilow. Trailer park girls go round the outside, round the outside. Chuck, 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 slim shady. Well, that's, that's, that's Manilow, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. And what makes Manilow a genius is he knows when a song isn't right for him. And he gives it graciously to another uh, performer, like Eminem. Oh, that's, really? Okay. That's what, uh, what other, because uh, you got the 16 Continents. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. What other Manilow songs? I'm going to tell you a big one. Standing at the edge of time. That I didn't know, but this is. Colored this. memories appear by my window. Mandy. Yeah. Mandy is one of his. He, or if you're praying mantis, Mandibles. He wrote Happy Birthday. No, that's an old, that came out of Europe like in like 300 years ago. Man of low. Man, Man of low. Below. Why do you think he has like houses everywhere? He probably owns this house. Okay? But, but, but he had, no, you don't get money from a, a song that's free domain. Guy, do you know you're supposed to pay every time you sing no, Happy Birthday? No, so that's, he. If that's he, a fact. No, no, it isn't. No, he, Barry Mound did not write Happy Birthday and you don't get it. Nobody gets a royalty for what Happy Birthday. It's about public you domain. Is you're doing Eminem songs and I play Trail along with you. Girls go around the. I play along with you. I give it to you. Wait, Barry Manilow wrote but you, Happy Birthday? See, thank you. I'd heard that. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. You go. that's better. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd heard that. He puts on, he puts on a great show. Tickets, by the way. $800 each. What? You spent $800 on Manilow? Uh, three tickets. <sighs> Damn, but, bro. you know, he's, you get to that point, and he's filling up. I mean, Dude, you could have bought inspiring. a pair of leotard, green leotards it's at inspiring. Rite Aid, put them on, and twirled around in this an onion like field in Fresno. And he's selling out, and he puts on a show full of energy. It was, wow. I mean. Very man of blow. <laughs> it just comes. It's it's incorrect what you're saying. I don't want to correct you on your own podcast, but you shouldn't. Uh, All right. Well, we're getting crazy here, and I think the like reason that. we're getting crazy is because we're about to do a crazy oh, news good. story. Crazy news story. Roll the clip. We're doing a crazy news story. The Harlan Highway. Crazy news story. That's weird. Wow. What? That's strange stuff. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, 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 okay. So here it is. Uh, braces, sex pills, fake eyeballs among bizarre New Jersey beach trash. Okay. Wait, there are braces in the trash? Yeah, let, let me read to you. Volunteers picked up a record amount of trash from New Jersey's beaches last year with plastic items dominating the hall and bizarre cast-offs including male enhancement pills, mm-hmm. a set of braces, and a glow-in-the-dark condom. Over 10,000 volunteers picked up over half a million items along the state's 127-mile coastline. A glow-in-the-dark condom, bro? Mm-hmm. Have you ever used one? I mean, uh, I don't believe I have, but 
that shouldn't surprise you that there would be dude glow in the dark do you, do you know do you, can you imagine your wiener getting swarmed by moths but have you have you been to jersey i mean no. that, they bling their dicks out there you know really you got it yeah they'll put diamonds on their condoms yeah it's all sorts of None of that surprises me. I'm sure the whole Jersey... I'm surprised they're even using condoms in New Jersey. Yeah. They, I'm sure the whole shoreline, it looks like jellyfish, but it's probably, you know, prophylactics or <laughs> just galore. Um, and then some of this stuff they found on the beach was just head scratching, if not stomach turning. Listen to this. Ooh, A hunk of human hair... A full set of dentures. Wait, 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 wait. The hair with the uh, part of the scalp in there? I, I don't know. A hunk. What is a hunk of human know. hair? I don't Who know. Who is this? Jeffrey Dahmer Beach or Hello! something? Ow! <laughs> he gives me the... Too soon! <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer reference. 2022. Jeffrey. Ooh, edgy! <laughs> Jeff, can you imagine putting tanning butter on at Jeffrey Dahmer Beach? That's just like an invitation to be eaten. That's like glazing a ham. Uh, that was the loudest hello. Let's do that hello back in slow motion, please. That was that probably knocked the Richter scale down at the observatory. It straightened my camera out. <laughs> uh, what else there was a, a clump of human hair a thong look at the camera's correct now <laughs> yeah right uh there was a thong yeah a, that's a good time a narcon kit you know the thing they used to revise yeah, that's, a drug yeah, that's addict? good was it, had it been used uh used no i don't know oh yeah it says a used narcon yeah, good kit. at least I, I hate to see one go to waste that wasn't fully used were the COVID tests all over the place? Are there, are I don't there know. COVID tests. I, I bet um, from that uh, Governor Richie, what's his name? I'm sure his food, all his fast food uh, garbage was up and down the beach too. Christy. Oh, Chris, Chris yeah, Christie. Yeah, Chris Christie. I'm sure his <laughs> fast food yeah, containers oh yeah. were all up and down. That was probably whose thong it was too. Probably his thong. And his glowing his condom. Hair. His glowing condom, Whoa. which he probably put on his head and blew up like Howie Mandel. Whoa, yeah. dude. Um, yeah. What else was there? Several marijuana bags, a bullet casing, and this one for you. A fake eyeball were amongst the items picked up. I'll tell you, and this is something that's going to change in the future, and I don't know if you saw the story, but they're now putting trackers in the eyeballs. So if you lose it, you can actually oh. track your eyeball. You can go, oh, turns out I left my eyeball at the beach. Oh, wow. How do you forget where you last left your eyeball? And imagine your eyeball sitting there in the sand watching you walk away. Yeah, and not saying and anything. And it, it doesn't have a mouth because it's just an eye. But imagine if you lost your eye and your mouth, mm -hmm. and then the eye and the mouth could team up, and he'd be like, mm -hmm, and the mouth would go, wait, come back. The eye, me and the eyeball are here. I don't think the, the fake eyeball actually sees. I think the fake eyeball is, it's like a marble. It's like a, you know, it's just, it's sort of, it's, it's, there's no functionality. It's there just eyeball, for bro. purely aesthetics. Bro, it's an eyeball. It's not an eye, like this is an eyeball. This is, yeah, that's what it says God, was on the beach. See. An eyeball was no, on no, the beach. No, no, fake eyeball. Is that what it said? To say fake? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be a marble. It could be part of a game. It could have been um, an eyeball, uh, a prototype for the eyeball emoji, which is... Now coming out, they're coming out with all eyeball emojis. So you know, uh, you can I just eyes, interject here? You, you sit eye. here and make fun. It, or and some can... guy in New Jersey is walking around with a hole in his face with one eye. And you're sitting here having fun at the expense of old one-eye Willie or whatever his name is. He's probably walked into a light pole just now. Well, you know while you're sitting really, here having ha-has. What could really help this podcast and really generate some goodwill for both of us is if we started a GoFundMe for this guy and got him an eyeball. Are you cereal right yeah, now? Like a real, like a real badass eyeball that like what color lights up and like you know like, like a like a glow in the dark eyeball like the condom. No, no, even better. I just bought a new uh, boom box. Okay, and it's 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 Bluetooth. And so, I got the old Jeffrey Dahmer reference. So boom I box. Put, I put on play and this boom box. It goes like this, and there's different colors that come out of the speakers. Now, if his eyeball could match that, so if there was like thumping music, it'd be like greens and blues and reds. So a ghetto blaster eyeball. What if the guy, and nobody's brought up this possibility, what if the guy 
didn't need the eyeball anymore. What if so he a just new threw eyeball it. formed? Yes. Maybe he made a wish with it. Like it was like a penny and he threw it in the ocean. He's like, I wish I'd lose my other fucking eye. Or maybe he was like, you know, Van Gogh cut off his ear. Oh, yeah. Maybe this guy was like, you know, for love. For love, I take my eye out and throw it on the sea in hopes that one day, Mary, you will drift back to me. Mandy. I just wrote that, bro. I just improvised a poem. I love that line, standing on the edge of time. He wrote that. Standing on the edge of time. I mean, he's he's brilliant. So let's keep going here. Um, all told, 530,000 items were collected, the most ever. More than 82% of the haul was plastic items or pieces, bottle caps, cups, lids, straws, uh, candy uh, wrappers. Uh, uh, you don't why like are they counting them? What a I don't waste know. of taxpayer money. Yeah. Put them in a bag. Let's move on. Like, estimate. You don't like the straws. You don't, You got a thing about the, the, the plastic straws and the yeah. turtles. Yeah, because we were raised on straws, and that's, I feel very strongly about you know, straws and, you know, I just feel like this excessive, I hate plastic. If I could eliminate all plastic, I would. And when you say eliminate, you mean just throw it away in the ocean? Throw it away in the ocean and kill more of this sea life. No, I mean, plastic's horrible. There's a documentary on Netflix about this company uh, in in Texas that just destroyed, you know, this land with their waste. Plastic... Put your plastic glasses away. They're actually, okay. they're making me angry. Yeah. I, I these would look nice. Easily. If I threw these on a beach, maybe they'd find their way to the, the, the eye. Dude, can you imagine Whoa, if throw you this. threw those on the beach and you ended up in next year's article? But what if I threw this on the beach and the waves miraculously r- washed it up right to the eye? That'd be so The cool. missing eye. And then some guy walks by and sees... Life is funny. You never yeah. know. We can dream. Could happen. Have you ever found anything weird on a beach? Like anything really weird Next or creepy? Girlfriend. Are you serial? No. <laughs> what have I found on a beach? I love the guys that have so much free time. They sit there with the metal detectors. Oh, yeah. And then they pan for yeah. stuff. And I don't know. They probably find... When I was a kid, I had train track braces. And one of those guys found me and took me home to his cabin for about a week. Yeah. And I said, dude, uh, just because I was on the beach doesn't mean you get to collect me. And he said, shut up and finish your cabbage and pass me the duct tape. And I was like, what, what's going on? Anyways, I found a dolphin once, a dead dolphin on a beach, which, oh, really? you, which you'd think would be normal on a beach, right? It was a dead yeah. dolphin. It was kind of dehydrated. Here's the kicker, and you'll get a laugh out of this. Not missing an eye. There was an eye stuck in his blowhole. No. It, I'm not even kidding. This thing was dried out. Someone had tagged it. A dead dolphin. Some idiot came along with spray oh, paint. Oh, really? And, yeah. Oh, they tagged my. a dead dolphin. And what did the tag say? I couldn't read it. I don't speak dolphin. <laughs> or do I? Now, Harlan, you made that sound in a movie, and you were known for that sound, right? Well, we were talking about iconic things, and that, that was one of the things I improvised. But let's not make this about me. What movie was that? That was Dumb and Dumber, my first movie. Boy, I mean, that happened. You must have thought, here we go, this is it. No, actually, I didn't. I didn't know what to think. But you'll like this story. I don't think I've ever told you this. When, we, when I went to the premiere of that movie... It was at the Cinerama Dome on Sunset, a historic, like, circular movie theater. It was my first movie I'd ever been in. I'd never been to a premiere. It was Dumb and Dumber. I didn't know what was going on. I'm sitting there, and my scene comes up, and I'm 60 feet high. I'd never seen myself. I was terrified. I hear someone laughing behind me. I turn around, right by his knees on the back of my chair, Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. And I'm just like, what? That's when everything just kind of short. I'm like, here's this comedy legend laughing at me. And that's when I kind of thought my the matrix opened up. And what was the line? 
Well, I only had a short scene. I was only on screen for about t- two minutes. But it's or... one of those scenes that like people remember. I think, in fact, you were the hitchhiker. No, I was the cop I, in Dumb and Dumber. I was the cop who drank the pee. I pulled ah, them over and drank yeah. the pee. I was the hitchhiker in Something About Mary. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's what I remember. Like that was before I knew you. Yeah, it was my first thing, and I, I, I didn't think here we go. I just thought, what the hell's going on, man? Yeah. Like it blew my mind. Like Richard Pryor's right here. And did you say anything? No, I was I terrified. Shh. <laughs> Shut up! Shh. Shut up, you this comedy is my legend. Big scene. Yeah. Damn comedy legend, always blabbing away during the movies. Anyways, um, I want to do a thing with you called word association. This, oh, this goes pretty this quick. Second. Yeah, yeah. So what we do mm-hmm. is we. Throw a word out, and the first thing that comes to your mind, tell me what goes right, on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna or- actually, I'm gonna actually try and take this seriously. Orny, Orny Adams, mind okay. your your first right. word, <clears throat> word association with Orny Adams. And but remember, to lower my mic at that two seconds because I, I just like <clears throat> usually like mine. You have a cough button. You can hold it and it shuts the mic off. Oh no, we like we like uh, coughs here. <clears throat> my my listeners, uh, they're flemmers. They love phlegm, and they love. <laughs> Yeah, they like that. Do that here. Let me join you. Big plug for Coke. Were you a new Coke guy? Did you get into new Coke? No, it was horrible. I tried it. I I loved Coke my whole life. my impression of you in episode one. Yeah. That one angle you were covered from. I did it on purpose. I had had, uh, acne. One guy, you don't have to cover up. Um, Are you okay? Okay, over there, guy. I don't know. Let's play word association. Word association. Orny Adams, your first word, giraffe. Zoo. No, it's not like you don't. You say another word. It's like what? What is it? What I does it make up. you feel? No, you didn't screw up. But it's like what? What is there? A memory? Is there a story? Is there something? Yeah, the does, zoo. Let's move on. No, you want? I, you, I didn't understand. I thought. You, Sorry. So it's you, word association. Usually, it is just a word, but this is. Does it evoke a memory? Does Got it, it does it uh, create an image yes, for it you? Does. Giraffe. Uh, my girlfriend in college. Oh, yes, was a giraffe. Was a giraffe. She so she could from pleasure FAO you from the other Schwartz, room. One of those life size. Ooh, giraffe. Expensive. And I did get her something. Uh, I don't know if I got her that one, but I remember she was obsessed with giraffes. Really? Yeah. She came to one of my shows a few years ago, and it's pretty wild. Pretty wild. Why Why giraffes? What was her thing about giraffes? You know, I'm a guy, and we don't really ask why. You just do it before the fight breaks out. But wait, you you were kind of sketchy on you said, yeah, I sort of got her, and you went like this. Like, did you get her a zebra or something? Because no. the giraffe is here. Zebra is here. No, no. F. And F. Galapagos F. tortoise is like way down here. Every other source had a giraffe that was probably thousands of dollars. You know, I'm in college. I probably right. got her a smaller Knock off giraffe from somewhere else, from JC Penny. Zebra, you got her a zebra. Could we not crap on my well? Word you know, you, s- you started here, and you Why? downgraded Why your girlfriend. I don't no, know. She I... was a great girlfriend. She, uh, she was she's great. a great girlfriend. She's great. She's married. She came with her husband. Was... Did you guys do a lot of necking? Yeah, we used to. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh yeah, in her parents' home with her. Parents, uh, necking upstairs, yeah. Giraffe, mm. necking. Oh. oh, I got him. Get you don't get this guy. I just got him. Wow. That's the whole reason I brought him in for the podcast was to see if I could get him or any Adams. Everyone said I couldn't. I just fucking got what, you. Let, I would like to know the official <sighs> count of how many times you had to say mm. necking before I figured it out. I, I bet it was. It seven. should have been one. Yeah, for a clever lad like you. But the <laughs> fact that I had to say it seven times, I feel like maybe I got you seven times. I didn't know it was a, this kind of podcast. We're well, it's it's a challenge. It might make it a challenge for yeah. myself. Okay, second word, mm-hmm. Mars. Well, you know that just reminds me of my joke that I do know about us going to Mars. Let's hear it. This no, Let's I don't do it. Just I don't. Come on, do don't be such a bit. Don't be so but, selfish, you know, Orny Adams. Or that we're all moving to Mars. <laughs> Keep going. I want to hear this bit. Is this what you wanted? I, I, up no, my, I didn't know about your bit, but let's yeah, be, let's do. keep. I don't know your bit. We're all gonna. We ruined Earth, so okay. now we're all going to Mars, a planet where there's no oxygen. 
<laughs> and have, I love it. Have you ever been to Mars? No. Well, yeah, I was Rocket Man. I was the first guy to Mars in the movies. And you you couldn't breathe when you were on Mars. Right. right. Like, have you ever been to the top of Mount Everest? I've flown around the top of Mount Everest. Haven't, I haven't I, stood on it. No. Okay. No what oxygen. What do those people do? They need oxygen. They take a picture. They get down. Why? Yeah. Because there's no oxygen. Right. right. So now we're going to go. We've ruined this planet. So instead of fixing it, we're going to go to Mars. And here's the thing. We're all going. It's going to be the same assholes up there. It's going to be no different. There's going to be people on Mars going, you know what? This planet's flat too. There's going to be flat Marsers. Not the greatest example of my comedy, but you know, it's it's a it's a it's a, a long setup to somewhere else. Where I we're going. love it. And love I'll it. tell you something. Yes, that joke has not gotten me slapped yet. Oh, it will. Do you fear it will. talking about being slapped is going to encourage? By the way, if you ever do this out in a field near some crop circles, you're going to get slapped real mm. good. And those aliens, their fingers are about this long, man. And how many do they have? They have four, and you, you're, you're going to get alien slapped. You've been obsessed with aliens your whole... You, you and your cousin both are alien. Like, do you believe aliens yeah man of course i believe in aliens where do you think crop circles come from mm. somebody walking around in circles with boards on their feet mm -hmm. do you think the aliens have been here do you i think, think they... it's i think it's very plausible aliens uh circulate Why in and, in and around plausible instead of possible because i can't prove it where did your brain go there like it, i think it's very possible versus very plausible because plausible means it's it's very likely it could happen it's very similar to possible just different letters if you could get me out of this comedic well i just thank you i just think possible would have been okay okay for for orny's sake because he's a guest and i don't change yeah. my words often i think it's possible orny adams yes. that there's aliens because uh the universe is too vast we don't know where it ends we don't know where it starts there's got to be something else out there what they look like what they sound like what they smell like i agree with it's that. not for me to know i agree with that there's something out. i don't think they've been here i don't think they built the pyramids I don't think they traveled billions of light years not to kill us. To build triangles. Yes, to decorate. To put pumpkin eyes in the desert. We're going to decorate. Yeah. And they come from the future. There's not even air conditioning in there. <laughs> There's no... It's an alien construction site. They didn't leave alien beer. Have you ever been yeah. to a construction site? There's beer all There's over no the No cans place. anywhere. No porta potty. Where yeah. do you go to the bathroom? Just doesn't add up. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I think you're right. Okay, good. I'm glad I asked you about Mars. Here's the next one. There's there's two more. Word association. Orny, what do you think about when you hear the term Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care? I, it reminds me of a comedian that used to do a joke about that in Boston in the early days. Really? Yeah, about Jimmy Crack Corn. I don't care. Yeah, I can't remember the joke, but uh, it reminds me of that. It reminds me of uh, Americana. Okay, Norman Rockwell type of vibe. Rockwell, it's simpler times. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I like you, that and answer. And here's the other thing, and this is going to shock people. Barry Manilow wrote that, and it reminds me of the greatness of Barry Manilow and the the range, the range to go from Jimmy Crack Corn, Happy Birthday, uh, to uh, Beethoven's Fifth. Standing on the edge of time. What does that mean to you? He just he's he's looking out, going because these guys write that song when they're like twenty one. He's standing on the edge of time. I think it's a beautiful line because Mandy's the topic of the song. He's in love with Mandy, and he's standing on the edge of time, and time is endless and infinite, and he's looking for Mandy and and that's how vast and huge his love is and how empty it is now that she's gone away the edge of time he's not just sad she went back home to Cleveland to live with her mother so funny because he's like, on you, the you edge of time you Broseph. scoff you mock me when I bring him up and it's very plausible that you probably maintain the Barry Manilow Wikipedia page because you just <laughs> <laughs> you just did a complete dissertation of Thank the you. lyrics. Thank you very much. I like to dissertate when I get the opportunity. <laughs> all right, Jimmy. Let's hope all the cameras are recording. Yeah, I don't think they are. 
<laughs> they don't need That's to be. That's my biggest fear. Uh, last uh, not, word not. association. Oh. Here we go. Final one. Jared from Subway. Uh, pedophile in jail. Isn't that correct? Isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. That's it? Well, I thought it was a bullshit diet, but this is now my second thought. That My first thought was he's in jail, and he's in jail because he's a convicted pedophile, which I think is factual. Am I right? If it right. isn't, I... I'm yeah, apologize. you're right. Okay. That's The other thing is the second thought, which is equally... Because like I'm like one of these modern computers where there are just there are just all sorts of I'm like an M1 Apple chip, okay? There's wow. 16 highways going on. You're here. like Watson. There's one Harlan Highway. I got 16 thoughts at one time. Whoa. So right there, it's a bullshit diet, and I don't like bullshit di- where they go. Oh, he just ate subs and lost weight. I, yeah. I hate. Started when I was a kid, everyone was doing the popcorn diet. Then there was a grapefruit diet. Everyone's jumping on band, band, these, these, these bandwagon diets. There's, oh, the AKA berry bowls, ACAA berry bowls. Because somebody in Peru discovered some berry on some mountain. So now they bring it over here. We're all supposed to be in shape and help our complexion and our virility. So we're on the beach in New Jersey. We can put on our glow in the dark condom and nail somebody with one eyeball. This is. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> it sounds like somebody has been eating them damn berries. I'll tell you that much. This mofo hamped up right now. <laughs> wow. Dude. Talk about a Durster station or whatever you called it. That felt like a real dirt. Are you seducing the gay camera this again? This is what is what is this broke back camera here? What are you doing? I don't know what. Yeah, um, I just caught you giving the like the most seductive look I've ever seen to a gay camera. First of all, you said it wasn't. I'm not going to comment on the, the what I'm deeming uh, camera homophobia. Um, I am seducing the viewers. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I'm talking to the viewer. Like right now, you think this is a conversation oh, between us? I see. I'm talking to. The 22 new people that subscribed last week to oh. your podcast, so the 800, which I, by the way, I'm not mocking that. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm looking at them and I'm saying, you know, let's dance. Let's dance. What else are you saying? Like, let's say now you're in room 473 at the Bakersfield Motel 6. Now, how what are you, you saying? I don't know what room I stay at. I'm just, I can see it in your eyes. That's how good you are. When you call Harlan, and I'll give out his telephone number in a few moments, you get a Message that says what? I'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> this is Harlan. Leave a message. Yeah, I'll is that the still light. there? Uh, yeah. God, I recorded that years ago. That's great. It's great. Yeah. I like he, Orny's, one thing we've learned with Orny today, he's a very good deflector. Whenever I start talking about him and sexual activity in a Motel 6 in Bakersfield, he just suddenly turns it around on me magic well i've done i've done uh podcast after podcast of my own talking about my Ah, pull your eye out and go throw it on a beach (laughs) um i wouldn't even know it was enough like if i found it i would i would think it was like a fishing lure (laughs) yeah right wouldn't you? Yeah, for well, sure. It could it probably make could. A great fishing lure. I, I bet there's a, like a shark. They eat humans. Yeah. You could probably catch a great war- white with a human I eye. I saw a video that you want to, like, when I was, uh, like, I was an adult. When I, thank God, I found this out as an adult, that sharks could bite you in three feet of water. I would not have enjoyed the beach as a kid if I had known that sharks, yeah. I always figured they had to be further out. No, most of the attacks happen, they say, in less than three feet of water. I saw... A video of a sh- there was like a rocky sort of coastline. Yeah, and there was a bird on a rock, and the shark. Oh yeah, went I've seen up. it. Yeah. yeah, and then the water splashed it back, took it back out. It's but all it's like, red. Yeah, I didn't know that they were they're coming up on shore and grabbing. Well, they're they're uh, creatures of opportunity, right? Most predators are. Yeah. Have you ever seen the one of the of the killer whales, the orcas that go right up on the beach and grab the seals? Mm-hmm. I mean, holy smokes. And sometimes they get stuck out there. Can you imagine if that's what happened to this guy? Something came up on the beach, grabbed him, and shook him around, and only his eye was left. No, what if it was like... He spit it out. (laughs) Oh, wow, the final insult. Screw you. Like, I ate one one of your eyeballs. It didn't... Yeah, I won't eat an eyeball, 
and I won't eat a, a glow in the dark condom. Oh, let me ask you a question because I think we're, t- we're talking about deflecting. Tell me yeah. if this is a good deflection. Sure. I don't eat any seafood. This is another fact about me. I don't eat seafood. I know you don't. Another reason why I use straws because I'm not killing fish normally. So if one of my straws kills a fish, it yeah. comes out of my overall right tally of fish. Tally of my murder. Lifetime. Yeah. But people always you don't eat you don't eat fish. Yeah. So now I'm thinking of saying this. Like, say it to me, ready? Well, you don't eat fish? No, but I eat bean sprouts. How about alfalfa sprouts? That's what I mean. Say, say it again. Say it again. Sorry. Well, you don't eat fish? No, but I eat alfalfa sprouts. Okay. By the way, and I, I'll have to, I, I know the law here, but I don't know like Jersey law, but discarding your eyeball is littering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that whoever did that had it had if if we should discover this is intentional. Yeah, it's got a ticket coming. Yeah. Full fine. Full fine. Probably, I'd say between eighty and a thousand dollars. Dude, you love old references. Remember. Uh, but how can you give someone a ticket and expect them to pay for it when they can't read it? Got he no can, eye. He can read half of it, and he can or she, and they can pay half of it. Remember Bobbitt, the one that cut off her husband's penis and then threw it on the side of the road? And then Do the I? Cops had to like go search for the missing penis. Dude, it didn't go down the side of the road. I was driving that day in my convertible. Yeah. And that cock hit me right in the forehead and that then what? bounced. It bounced. Then it bounced down in the ditch. Have you ever seen? I was like 15 feet behind them. She threw that pecker out of the window pecker i'm just rolling pecker. along listen to barry manilow on yeah. a nice summer day blasting copacabana bonk yeah a penis hits me in the face and here's the part here's and and, and took I took my like, eye out yeah and people like they, they probably don't believe this story and i'm telling you and and you can choose to believe me or not but that day you texted me the severed penis emoji right and, your head, a head, severed penis emoji, and I go, wow. Well, I think the wow came from because phone, cell phones hadn't been invented yet, and it just blew your mind that I sent you an emoji and for remember something you got that angry didn't at me even exist. I go, wow, you are a dickhead. I always get angry at you. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Time for another hand-drawn shirt by yours truly. And if you don't know... I draw my own t-shirts. I take Sharpie markers and I draw directly on the t-shirt. And if this shirt's still available, you can own it at harbling.com. So let's go ahead and reveal this week's hand-drawn Harlan t-shirt. Well, here we go, everyone. Here's today's featured hand-drawn t-shirts. And the first one is a depiction of the Grim Reaper, or Death as we call him, eating his favorite breakfast cereal, Life. So I thought it was kind of funny to have uh, <laughs> have Death eating Life. I thought that was kind of a cool image. So that's one of today's featured shirts. And then of course, who doesn't love Kung Fu? And who doesn't love carrots? So here we go, we've got Kung Fu Carrot with his little Kung Fu slippers on. And these are today's hand-drawn shirts. I drew these directly onto the material. And if they're still for sale at harbling.com, you can pick one up. And if you miss out on getting the original, we do make prints of the shirts. And if you don't see any of these, there's a whole bunch of other designs at harbling.com. I'll live it up before you get kicked in the tune-up by a Kung Fu Carrot tune-up. I meant turn-up, idiot. Uh, Final thing. Orny Adams, the comedian. Final, final thing. We want to end on a laugh. Orny, do you have a favorite joke from another comedian that you've heard somewhere in your travels or done a show with or seen on a special. Can you tell us uh, one of the, your favorite jokes from another comedian? Yeah, I mean, there are so many. Just pick one of your favorite. Well, I'll favorite. tell you one that came up last night because okay. I think this is, um, and I think you appreciate comedy like, like I do. I, I think comedy done right is mathematical. 
Right. And it's a thought that that many people could have, probably do have, but don't know how to articulate it in the comedy mathematical form. Okay. And it's Chris Rock. So let's let's okay. yeah, let's do a Chris Rock because let's hear it. there's a guy that. Um, I used to go on after Chris Rock all the time at the Comedy Cellar. For months, I would go on. Yeah. She'd always put Rock, then me. And I'd have to follow him. And one time, the, the, he was doing his stuff, and I, you know, he was doing okay. Um, but it wasn't destroying. Yeah. And they said, next week, he's taping his new special. I'm like, yes, I don't know. This is ready. <laughs> and that was Bigger and Blacker, which right. is arguably one of, the, you know, one of the greatest. Yeah. And there's a guy who is funny, poignant, and also, I just love rhythmically how he works. Okay. I think comedy is, like, if you take a Seinfeld, very rhythmic. Yeah. And he has a joke. I hope I don't butcher it. Uh, in every city, there's two malls. The mall the white people go to and the mall the white people used to go to. <laughs> and that, that says it all. You know, it's like that's, you know exactly what he's saying. Right, right. And so to me, that's, you know. Cool. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. there's so many. If you don't love that, Sam Kinison. That's you know, it. We only desert. want one. It's we only want, okay. we only want one. But I find okay. it interesting that, that that joke is, is um, it's a little bit of a social commentary joke <clears throat> and a joke. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's, I, I, for some reason, I thought you'd, you'd have like a silly, weird, funny joke. But that's. It's interesting you picked that uh, you know, topic. Pumpkins are the only species oh, that have Oh, God, here we eyes. go. Look at hey, this folks. guy over here. Oh, great, uh, Look at, I'm oh, this close to kicking your ass all the way to New Jersey, okay? I'll punch you right in the eye. Oh, wait, you don't have a freaking eye. I like comedy that makes you think, like Carlin. Oh, I mean, there's some God. of his stuff okay. that's like, you know, you know how come, come how on. come, <laughs> how come? For us, it's an abortion, but for a chicken, it's an omelet huh huh can we get barry manilow in here please take him away <laughs> ladies and gentlemen please check out orny adams on his instagram on his twitter on his facebook watch his uh his uh showtime special what was the last one called orny uh more than loud more than loud uh listen to his albums and more than anything get on orny's beautiful podcast is called what's wrong with orny adams it's on his patreon page it's on youtube and what else do you want to plug before really we go really nothing i mean i just uh i'm just happy to be here with you supporting you Yay. and i think this yeah. is this is a big moment that we've been talking about and yeah i know it, it takes courage courage and courage, courage. And you know that the, there's a lot going the, the the podcast landscape is it's getting bigger and bigger and so yeah it's, and it's fun, and, and Orny and I have been encouraging each other, and, uh, and so it's great to have you here, my friend, and uh, what a fun time. Thank great you. to have a laugh. Great to see you laughing. Thanks for making me laugh. That's it for today, everybody. Thank you for riding down the Harland Highway, and until next time, chicken chow mein, baby. Hey guys, it's Harland here, and I wanted to talk to you about the bonus treats of the Harland Highway podcast. So as many of you know, when I did the audio version of the Harland Highway podcast for about 11 years, uh, much of the, the podcast was uh, filled up with many characters that I did. I used to... Uh, I had a whole library of crazy characters that I did, and I'd interview them over the phone, and I'd interview them in the studio, but you never, ever saw them. They were characters that I did all the voices to, and they were very comedic and very crazy and very funny, and, um, and you could never see them, and I, I kind of created this theater of the mind atmosphere with my library of characters, and many of you have been asking, are you going to do the characters on the video version of the Harland Highway? And the answer is no, because even though I could record it, I feel like it kind of pops the bubble. It bursts the illusion of how you perceive the character to look like. Each character has its own unique voice and personality, and I think the best way to appreciate those characters is just to hear them. 
If you saw me doing the voices, I think it would ruin it for you. I, I think it would ruin it for me. So as interesting as it would be and, and kind of unique as it would look to see me doing that live, I am not going to do that. But here's the good news, and this is why I'm talking about the bonuses, is I'm going to keep doing these characters. And just to name a few of them, there's Samuel E. Quauk, who writes the romantic love letters. There's Mr. Featherstone, my boss, who's the most uh, obnoxious boss on the planet. There's my phone calls with Boy George and, and, and uh, George Michael, the British pop stars. There's my calls with my Aunt Ruthie from Rochester, New York. Sweet. Well, I was about to do her voice, but I didn't, see? I don't want to ruin it. There's Aunt Ruthie who calls in and leaves messages on my answering machine. There's Professor Rutherford Grimes, who's a, a professor of black history uh, up at uh, Berkeley. There's Carl Flavors, the surfer dude. There's uh, Commander uh, Lieutenant uh, uh, Colonel Right Hand uh, French uh, Commander Tom Dowdy from the military. I mean, there's there's Billy the Campfire Song Kid. There's Cinnamon Boy. There's so many crazy characters that I did. But I don't want to stop doing them because they were one of my favorite elements of the Harland Highway podcast. So here's how you can get Aunt Ruthie and Tom Dowdy and, um, you know, my, th- my, my therapist. I have, a, I have a creepy therapist that I, I did voice stuff with and uh, oh, just all kinds of nutty characters. So, so here's what you do if you want to get those bonus characters. You go to patreon.com. Uh, And I have a Patreon account, and what that is, it's a special account where I can download special content, and for a small fee, you get all this special bonus content. You're going to get all my characters from the Harlan Highway, you get special videos that I do, you can even hear the audio version of this podcast, you get uh, special photographs, special artwork, special film clips. I mean, also, we're going to post bonus uh, material from these these video podcasts, including um, Orny Adams uh, doing the uh, the visit with uh, Car- uh, Carl Saliva, the uh, the uh, the medium. So there's all kinds of benefits to joining the Patreon and uh, and becoming a member of that. And to do that, just go to uh, Google and type in Harlan Williams Patreon account, and it should take you right there. And for $5 a month, you get all this bonus material that we don't have time to put into this podcast, the video podcast. So um, this is what we call the bonus bacon in here. And uh, if you want to enjoy uh, all those uh, cool things and much, much more to come as, as the podcast starts to evolve, you know me, I'll find other ways to add bonus material. But it's a small fee to pay, $5 a month, and there's other tiers if you want to go higher. But at the basic level, $5 a month gets you a lot of laughs. And uh, I promise you, if you're a fan of all those characters I did, you're going to love being on my Patreon. So go to go to Google, type in Harlan Williams Patreon, and uh, you can uh, go to Patreon, follow the lead, join up. And here's the good news. If you don't like it, you can jump off. $5 a month. What's that? A, that's a cheeseburger at McDonald's. <laughs> and if you don't, so with McDonald's, once you eat it, it's in there, unless you're going to do one of these. Ah, but with mine... With my Patreon, if you don't dig it, if you don't like it, you can just bail out, cancel, and and you've spent five dollars. But I th- I think you're gonna really enjoy it because I love doing those characters, and uh, and I love bringing you uh, all kinds of weird bonus material. So it's definitely another level to what you're getting here, and uh, that's it. I hope you enjoy uh, the Harland Highway uh, bonus bacon. And uh, sizzle away. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you're enjoying the Harland Highway podcast. Chicken chow mein, baby.